findings at Value City Furniture. High quality, guaranteed lowest prices. This is a CBS News special report. I'm Katie Couric reporting from CBS News headquarters in New York. Hi, everyone. On this Valentine's Day, President Bush has decided it's time for a heart-to-heart -heart with the White House press corps. He's called a news conference, and there's a lot in the news to talk about. The war in Iraq, the debate in the, at the House on a resolution opposing an increase of troop levels in Iraq, accusations Iran is helping the enemy, and the North Korea nuclear deal to name just a few issues. We're told the president will have an opening statement about the Korea deal and about a conversation he had today with the new U.S. commander in Iraq, General David Petraeus. Our chief White House correspondent, Jim Axelrod, is in the East Room. Jim, what did General Petraeus and the president discuss this morning? Well, Katie, now that General Petraeus has been on the ground in command for five, six days, there was a just a general read of the situation on the ground, but probably, they, I imagine, they got into some discussion of a program that Prime Minister Maliki is uh, announcing uh, in Iraq. Uh, it's known by a code name, Imposing Law, and what it is is a crackdown. The Prime Minister is talking about uh, establishing a system of checkpoints, uh, suspending gun permits, establishing curfews as well that is designed to even impose martial law, the Prime Minister says, and the President will be talking about that, I'm sure, in his opening statement as he's walking into the room. Here now, Katie, the President of the United States. Uh, thank you all. Please be seated. Thanks for coming in on a icy day. I have just finished a conversation with General David Petraeus. He gave me his first briefing from Iraq. Uh, he talked about the Baghdad security plan. It's the plan that I described to the nation uh, last January, and it's a plan that's beginning to take shape. The uh, uh, General Petraeus and General Odierno uh, talked about how the fact uh, that the Iraqi government is following through on its commitment to deploy three additional army brigades, Iraqi army brigades, in the capital. We talked about uh, where those troops were being deployed, uh, the position of U.S. troops uh, with them, as well as the embeds with the Iraqi troops, and we really talked about the plan. Uh, he also talked about the new Iraqi commander, and uh, the commander who, uh, who Prime Minister Maliki picked to operate the Baghdad security plan is in place. They're setting up a headquarters, and they're in the process of being in a position to be able to coordinate all forces. In other words, there's still some work to be done there to get, these, to get the command and control center up and running in Baghdad. Uh, we talked about um, the fact that our coalition troops that are heading into Baghdad will be arriving on time. That was, was, I'm, I'm paying attention to the schedule of, uh, of troop deployments to make sure that they're there, to, to, so that General Petraeus will have the troops to do the job, uh, the number of troops to do the job that we've asked him to do. Uh, we talked uh, about the coordination between Iraqi and coalition forces. Uh, and I would, I would characterize their assessment as the coordination is good, in other words, just good conversation, constant conversation between the commanders of, the, of uh, our troops and their troops, and that's a positive development. The operation to secure Baghdad is going to take time, and there will be violence. Uh, as we saw on our TV screens, uh, the terrorists will send uh, car bombs into crowded markets. In other words, these are people that will kill innocent men, women, and children to achieve their objective, which is the, uh, to discourage the Iraqi tr uh, people, to foment sectarian violence, and to frankly discourage us from helping this government do its job. Yesterday there was a suicide bomber. In other words, there's an active strategy to undermine uh, the Maliki government and its uh, Baghdad security plan. And our, our generals understand that. They know that they're uh, all aimed at, uh, at, frankly, causing people here in America to say it's not worth it. And I can understand why people are concerned when they turn on your TV, the TV screens and see this violence. It's disturbing to people. And it's disturbing to the Iraqi people. But it reminds me of how important it is for us to help them succeed. If you think the violence is bad now, imagine what it would look like if we don't help them secure the, the city, the capital city of Baghdad. 
I, I fully recognize we're not going to be able to stop all suicide bombers. I know that. But we can help secure that capital, help the Iraqis secure that capital so that people have a sense of normalcy. In other words, that they're able to get a better sense uh, that this government of theirs will provide security. Pe people want to live in peace. They want to they grow up in a peaceful environment. And the decision I made is going to help the Iraqi government do that. When General Petraeus' nomination was considered three weeks ago, the United States Senate voted unanimously to confirm him. And I appreciated that, uh, that vote by the senators. And now members of the House of Representatives are debating a resolution that would express disapproval of the plan that General Petraeus is carrying out. You know, in recent months, I've discussed our strategy in Iraq with members of Congress from, uh, from both political parties. Many have told me that they're dissatisfied with the situation in Iraq. I told them I was dissatisfied with the situation in Iraq. And that's why I ordered a comprehensive review of our strategy. I've listened to a lot of voices. People in my administration heard a lot of voices. We weighed every option. And I concluded that to step back from the fight in Baghdad would have disastrous consequences for our people in America. That's, what, that's the conclusion I came to. It's a conclusion members of my staff came to. It's a conclusion that a lot in the military came to. Uh, came to. And the reason why I had to say disastrous consequences, the Iraqi government could collapse, chaos would spread, there would be a vacuum, into the vacuum would flow more extremists, more radicals, people who have stated intent to hurt our people. I believe that success in Baghdad will have success in helping us secure the homeland. What's different about this conflict than some others is that if we fail there, the enemy will follow us here. I firmly believe that. And that's one of the main reasons why I made the decision I made. And so we will help this Iraqi government succeed. And the first step for success is to do something about the sectarian violence in Baghdad so they can have breathing space in order to do the political work necessary to assure the different factions in Baghdad, factions that are recovering from years of tyranny, that there is a hopeful future for them and their families. I would call that political breathing space. The, uh, and by providing this political breathing space, in other words, giving the Maliki government a chance to reconcile and do the work necessary to achieve reconciliation, it'll hasten the day in which we can change our force posture in Iraq. A successful strategy, obviously, a successful security strategy in Baghdad requires more than just military action. The, um, I mean, people have to see tangible results in their lives. I mean, they have to see something better. They not only have to feel secure where they live, but they've got to see positive things taking place. The other day, the uh, Iraqi government passed a $41 billion budget, $10 billion of which is for reconstruction and capital investment. There's a lot of talk in Washington about benchmarks. I agree. Benchmarks mean that the Iraqi government said they're going to do this. For example, have an oil law as a benchmark. But one of the benchmarks they laid out 